I'm really happy to see that lockdowns are starting to collapse um, in the red states, and not only in the red states. Uh, after Ron DeSantis led the way in Florida, we saw a rapid succession. Uh, Texas, uh, Mississippi uh, announced, that's it, uh, no more state requirements. And now I see, remarkably, there are a couple of blue states. Uh, Massachusetts uh, has opened the doors to indoor dining. Uh, effective March 19th, Connecticut is lifting all capacity limits on restaurants, retail, libraries, personal services, gyms, museums, and so on. This is a very uh, welcome trend. Now, it's not a trend that Joe Biden is happy about, probably advised by that little ogre Fauci. Uh, Biden has been uh, making some extravagant statements about this. Um, and in fact, uh, Biden referred to the Texans uh, as Neanderthals, Neanderthals, uh, for uh, lifting these regulations. Now, Governor Abbott of Texas uh, was not too happy with this kind of depiction, um, and he fired back. Listen. Is one of the people that he was thinking about. Governor, how do you respond to the president's unification message of calling you and other governors a Neanderthal? Two things, Brian. First, it obviously is not the type of thing that a president should be saying. But second, he kind of said it on the worst day he could have. Because the same day he said that, uh, in Texas, the Biden administration was releasing illegal, immigrant, illegal immigrants into our communities who had COVID. The Biden administration was spreading COVID in South Texas yesterday because of their lack of constraint uh, of, of testing and, and uh, quarantining. Now, we should be a little clearer about what Texas and these other states are doing, because it may seem that when they lift these requirements uh, on masks and social distancing, it's like no more masks in Texas, no more social distancing in Texas. That's not true. Uh, essentially, what uh, Texas is doing and these other states is trusting citizens to exercise freedom responsibly. First of all, by lifting a statewide requirement, it's still the case that private actors in the state, whether it's restaurants, I just saw that the Kroger restaurant chain in Texas, for example, yeah, you still have to wear a mask. There will be banks where you still have to wear a mask. So private institutions, corporations, organizations can impose mask requirements, social distancing requirements. And of course, individuals can wear masks. Uh, I wear a mask. Debbie wears a mask. We're careful. Uh, we're kind of at the age where we don't want to get COVID. We have no um, idea what kind of effect that's going to have on us. So the issue here is not uh, choice. It is who exercises the choice. Is the government going to force you or are you going to be able, and institutions going to be able to make their own, their own decisions? Now, the basic argument for freedom is that you tell people what you know about something, and, and not just the information you know, you also disclose the uncertainties, the things that you don't know, and then you let people make decisions. This is how we operate in all phases of life. I mean, do we need laws? Do we have laws telling people, listen, make sure you wear a warm coat in the winter? No. Why? Because people can see, hey, it's cold outside. I better put on my coat. You don't need a law to mandate that. Do we need laws that force people to eat lest they starve to death? No. You don't actually have to do that. Why? Because if you let people know, hey, listen, if you don't eat, you're going to get sick, you're going to get thin, you're going to starve, you're going to die. People are like, oh, wow, you know what? That sounds... Kind of like a good argument for eating. Do we need laws telling people not to jump off bridges? No, we really don't. Why? Because people kind of know not to do that. So the bottom line here is what we're saying is that people are in a position where they can assess risk. When their own self-interest is involved, as it is here, nobody wants to get sick, nobody wants to be in a vent on a ventilator in a hospital, nobody wants to be in a situation where you're helpless and you're... No! So people are going to take prudent measures. Now, of course, there are people on the left who don't believe this. Their operating premise is, no, Dinesh, don't be so optimistic. People are unbelievably stupid. You have to force them. They're just too dumb to follow normal. And they're too dumb for liberty. And my question is, really? If they're too dumb for liberty, why do we have a democracy? 
Isn't the basic premise of democracy in this country that people have enough intelligence, enough prudence, enough judgment to be able to exercise freedom responsibly? The left doesn't think so. In a very creepy way here, we, I see people like Keith Olbermann and Michael Moore basically saying, you know what? Uh, since the Texans have decided to do this, since they've decided to lift the mask requirements, the governor, let's punish the whole state of Texas by denying them the vaccine. This is how these people think. They are so sick, so demented, that their view is that if you do something politically that they don't like, the answer is let's deprive them of medicine. Now, in any other area, if you said this to Michael Moore, you said, hey, listen, here's a homeless guy. He's exercising his freedom very res irresponsibly. Do you want to deny him health care uh, as a result of that? Just to teach him a lesson, to show him that he shouldn't, he should act more responsibly. No, Michael Moore would be appalled. Oh, no, this is an entitlement. People have a right to medicine. We would So suddenly these sickos, to use the title of one of Moore's movies, have revealed their true colors uh, and shown the kind of tyrannical impulse on their side. Let's force people. Let's make them do it. If they don't do it, let's deprive them of the vaccine. How different this is from the freedom spirit that says of people, look, there are people who will make bad decisions, but I would rather someone freely make a bad decision than try to control his life.